Hello, I'm Jordan Bassett. You're watching Anime. We're here with the Prodigy. Hello. How are you doing? Doing well. Yeah, brand new, thanks. So, no tourists. Uh, to start off, how would you sum up this album in a few words? It's an album that incorporates everything, every sound and every angle we've been about over the years from the beginning. Like, we weren't afraid to stamp our authority back on the rave kind of first rave kind of sound and right. bring that bring that to what the kind of more violent sound of what we're doing now yes know? yeah because yeah, it is because it is it's such a, a heavy mm. album isn't it i think the, the last album was kind of more it felt more that felt like it was really like on the edge do you know what i mean this one is it's doing it in a different way. It feels like it's got more swagger or something in a way. Do you know right, know? okay, that's you know? interesting. Yeah, more, that's, my, that's my view on it anyway. More know? swagger, how did, like, does that ring true to you guys and how do you define that? Well, I, I don't know. I think the last, yeah, actually I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I really I, wanna I, know what you're gonna yeah, say no, now. No, no, it was, uh, no, too much summary and it's not that thought about. But I mean, obviously, when you're doing the interviews, it was, you know, you, 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 you're, you're always bringing up, you know, thoughts and thinking about things like you've never thought about right, them sure, before. Yeah. But um, I think, uh, no, I, I agree with Liam. It's uh, it's all the it's all the good bits. It's uh, this, this album seems to be. It's, it's just raw. Do you know what I mean? It's more direct. It's just right up front. It's in your face. Yeah. You know, and I think that the whole process. You know what, what the band been through, the album, Liam producing it, and, and taking, you know, not going into the studio and having someone else, yeah, involved in the mix stage of it. I think I think people always are trying to do kind of some kind of rave revival, and it always comes across as if it's kind of this happy kind of sound. Right. And so we wanted to kind of, I don't know, we wanted to kind of show the more sort of like. You know, because when we got into it, it was kind of like East London sort of pirate radio, kind of really raw and dangerous kind of gritty sort of sound. And that's what really inspired some of the tracks on this record. Um, just not being afraid to go back to that kind of first era of the prodigy. Yeah. You know? Yeah, Cause yeah a, definitely. A lot of people as their like, career progresses and they, a lot of guys kind of mellow out. I feel like you've gone in the opposite direction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's weird. It, it feels like that. I mean, I feel like that as a person, probably. You know, um, well, you think you're sort of less mellow now? I don't think I've ever been mellow. <laughs> no, I, don't, okay. I really don't. No, I, I don't sit there thinking about myself. But like what Keith says, you, when people are talking to you, asking questions, and they ask you about yourself, that's the time when you go, yeah, yeah. yeah. Am I angry? I don't. I don't think I'm angry, but I must be. Do you know what I mean? Right, but I'm not angry. I don't walk along the street. Uh, I'm not angry about certain issues or things. I'm just carry that in me, do you know what I mean? But it's, I, I like music that wakes me up. I like music that has tension, do you know what I mean? And that's kind of what I've always been attracted to, do you know what I mean? I think if, I, if ever I brought an album like back in the day, or I'd always be, you know, always gravitate to like track four and seven, for instance, that were the, the more upfront right. tracks that, that, you know, that sort of shook, shook me and moved me and, you know, uh, were calling out to be put on repeat. And right. then, and then, then, I'd, then I'd get into the rest of the album and discover the other elements to it. Right, and, and the subtle and, things. Uh, yeah, that. and then, and see why that album was like put together and, you know, why it worked. Um, and I, I just, I, I suppose because, you know, Ultimately, the outlet is is um, stage. So when you play like the the older stuff now, like that's sound, to me that sounds like when it's live, it sounds like beefed up even more than yeah, it was yeah, it, it's, originally. Yeah, it's 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 kind of remixed because it's kind of like when you know we. I mean, I think all the old tracks we get. You know, you got kind of bored of playing them otherwise, unless you kind of add new things to them and kind of you know, bring them up to the standard of the other ones, you know, but that's just more for us, you know, because you can imagine playing Firestar three or five hundred times, do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, you, it's got to change at some point just to be fresh, you know. Well, like on that note, I mean, when you played your first gig, which was at the Four Aces in yeah. Dalston, yeah. did you think that, and that was in 1990, Yeah. did you think that like, 28 years later we'd be sat here yeah, talking about your seventh album? Did. You I did? Oh yeah. No, do you know what I mean? It's like we didn't, we didn't know. I gave my job up for that gig, you know. Really? Yeah, yeah. Just 
because you want to throw yourself into it. Do you know what I mean? And we didn't think it was going to last a you know a couple of months. You know, but I don't know when you find something you do, you just get on with it. Do you know what I mean? Do you remember how much money you made from that show? Hundred quid. Hundred quid. Yeah. Between. Between us. Yeah. yeah. Wow, and you gave it your job. I think we <laughs> No, that's combined with the pecan, pecan, uh, combined with the 200 quid record deal I got. Right, uh, right. No, you know, you just, you just, when you find something you, do, you like doing and you think you know you can do, you just carry on doing it. I mean, the time aspect always amazes me when people say it's that long ago because it feels like fucking 10 years ago. Right. The first gig, do you mean it was, it was literally looking forward to the next gig. And then, Literally looking forward to the gig after that, and then we had a gig in Italy, and was like, well, "I'm playing in Italy." Do you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then it was, and it's exactly the same today. Do you know what I mean? It's not That's great, yeah. looking forward to nine months. It's just looking forward to doing the tour. Right, you know? right, yeah, yeah. Time just goes so quick. Well, I suppose the reason, like, you know, going back to those early days and thinking about it compared to now, like the reason that a lot of people think that you know you've been around nearly thirty years, you can have sort of mellowed out a, a bit, is that like. You know, you don't have anything to prove anymore. You got your success. You make, you know, made a great living out of it. So, like, where does it come from? Do you think the desire to continue? Because, because we never, we never look for success. Do you know what I mean? I think we just kind of always were hungry for it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and it won't stop because because it's it's not a job for us. It's like just what we do. You know. Um, you know, I, I go in the studio to, to write beats because I still love it when I'm not doing any albums or anything. You know, I just I do it in any time. You know, because yeah. it's because I love it, and um, I don't think I don't think you can stop that because there's no agenda. Do you know what I mean? It's like we weren't we weren't trying to be successful. We were just just trying to do our job, and so it's kind of like, yeah, of course you earn money and whatever, but like it's it's kind of like. That's a byproduct of it all. Yeah. Do you know we didn't what I mean? get into it for that. Do you know, we didn't get into it for, for the for the so-called success of it. Right. And then we got into it because we love doing it. And I don't remember much over the you know the first sort of first half of the band. Do you know, because it's such a whirlwind. Do you know what I mean? It was pretty pretty crazy. I don't I don't think I appreciated it either. Do you know what I mean? It was just like it happened so quick, and people don't realise we didn't go from experience to firestar. It was building all the time. You know, it was every record every single, you know, the album in between, it was all elevating, do you know what I mean? So even when it hit, like, we weren't going, oh my God, it was just like, we just took it all in a stride and just got on with it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it, like, when it builds like that, you kind of, I guess we almost don't notice it as, as no, we, we didn't notice it because we're inside it and we still don't, because we don't, none of us really take, we, we don't really read, read the press or read anything about us ever, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just because, well, I don't know, we don't. I mean, I sometimes answer people's comments on yeah. <laughs> Instagram if I get pissed off of them, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. But, you know, but, 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 you know, outside forces has nothing to do with the inside energy we have, do you know what I mean? It's, it, what people say outside and people's yeah. points of view has no effect on... Mm. I imagine that's probably quite but, but it's, it's kind of like every time you, you go into, the or I go into the studio, it only gets written, it only comes out if it feels like it's got the, the fire still, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, if it hasn't, that's when we finished. Do you know what I mean? It's, and that could have happened. This album could have happened. The last album, it just had. You know, this album got written really quickly for some reason, just because I was really, I don't know, I just oh, really? found a really good zone. Yeah, this this record come out um, sooner than previous records. Like, you know, I think it was like three years ago, or whatever. But um, yeah, because that's, that's quite unusual for you. Cause it, it is unusual. Yeah, I, I, I just really dived into it and just really found a good headspace plus as well I'd, I mixed it myself so I was doing it as I was going along so I didn't have that ball lake of a, sitting in a big studio at the end fucking about with uh, big mixing desks and that nonsense right. I, mean? I just did it really DIY do you know what I mean we recorded vocals in hotel rooms as we were touring around I set up a studio in, uh, in Moscow in a hotel room and we used it as a base and um, I kept my room there while we went to St Petersburg and flew back and so I think it was three days off and more days off as we were going around. And that was a good, just keeping it really loose and so you didn't have this pressure of like, you, we're recording vocals next week, you've got to come right. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this too, can be too much sometimes and it should be really like, it should be easy because it should be just like, you know. Relaxed. Yeah, just like, yeah, this, this is the idea, what, what we got, yeah, this has got to be like this, you know. 
So is this the first time you've it, written and recorded on tour? Like this, yeah, it's in this intensity, yeah. I've done it before, but just... But I don't think we ever did vocals on tour, did we? No. No. We just, you know, messing about, but this is really, like... Because I, want, I wanted to get it done. I had this really urgency of, like, this real urgency of just wanting to just nail it. Yeah. Um, I was excited about it, you know. Before, it's kind of like I'd, the last album, it was almost like I'd run out of steam halfway through. Right. I had to have a break and then come back to it. But this one, I just powered through, man. And just each track kind of fed the other. And then all of a sudden, 10 tracks were done. It was like, yeah, we've got an album. It's fucking good. But you say you never went like, oh, we've got to put an album out. For... No, I, I wanted to just do EPs. After the last record, I was like, let's just do EPs now because I don't really... It's a pain in the ass, like sitting around waiting for me to be inspired. You right. know, it might happen this year, it might happen next year, I don't know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But, so that was the plan, we were just going to, I was just going to do three track EPs, drop them out, and then see what happened. That's, you know, that's go, like what Apex Twin does at the moment, just yeah. like put stuff out whenever. Yeah, which is, which is fair enough, but like, I've, I still believe in, that that was the original plan, and then of course, like, this album got finished and delivered. And then you kind of go, well, actually, yeah, an album kind of really puts its stamp on that year and put, is something that, because we still live by that old school kind of thing that we hope people still buy an album and have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fans do anyway, do you know what I mean? And it's kind of like you listen to it from start to finish. Of course, people don't fucking do that anymore, but you kind of have to make it like that still, I think. Yeah. I think bands still want to do that, you know. Did it, from, from your guys' perspective, did, you, did it feel different for you this time around as well? I mean, every recording process is different. You know, it's always, it's always finds its own way. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was quick, it was breezy, there was ideas flying around, you know, all the time. And, uh, yeah, it felt like it, it was on a good flow. And, um, and uh, a couple of tracks went into the set. You know, that obviously put new energy into the set and then yeah. and obviously you, it, you know you get really excited and you know buzzed up about what's to come and you know and uh, yeah again what Liam just saying what Liam's saying there you know just sort of you know Liam hit me up saying I'm going to take a mic to the show tomorrow can you do a couple of bits on this and send me the idea and talk about the idea you know briefly you know and then we get to the hotel throw it down and yeah, it was. Yeah, it was good. It worked. But if we, if, if for instance, let's call, let's say the next album, sure. which fuck knows, <laughs> fuck who, where, why, but you know, let's say the next album. If we went right, let's do that hotel yeah. recording right, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would fuck up. It wouldn't work. It would never work. Yeah, we'd have to. You, we'd have to do something do, different. You, uh, yeah, it's like the recording process. You never learn what the best way is, and it kind of like. You don't really want to learn because you want it to be spontaneous. Do you know what I mean? It's like I tend to rebel against myself anyway. So I'm, that's the beauty about it. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not to think, of, overthink it. Do you know what I mean? Just you know, not to overthink anything and just go with the flow and go yeah. with the vibe. Do you and, know what I mean? and just you know, know that you know. Obviously, speaking for myself, when you know when you're putting a vocal down, it's just it's just creating a noise or a sound for Liam to work with. When when you like tour and uh, you know perform live now, um, like how, how did you prepare for it? Is, it? is it different now than it was when you first started no, out? Man. No, we did, you know, we, of course we got new songs to rehearse or whatever off the new album, but like really there's no rituals or preparation, you know, we would probably rehearse um, a couple of weeks before, you know, to make sure we know. But even that is like, yeah, that'll just, just be loose. like a soundproof room. We keep it spontaneous. Run through the ideas, yeah. check that you know, you're dropping the lyrics in the right place and it's all, you know, it's all working and then, but really when you do it for the, for the real time is your first gig, you know, there's no it's more for the dress sound. rehearsal, you know, <laughs> right, there's right. no lights, there's no... The reason why it's because <laughs> it's always, it always, whatever exactly. preparation you do, it always sounds different on stage. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. It's always been spontaneous, do you know what I mean? And, you know, there was a time we tried to rehearse and we said, yeah, we should re And we're like, we sat down and I thought, what are we doing? And, yeah, <laughs> when was that? It never oh, happened, fucking you know I mean? years ago. <laughs> it, never, it never happened, do you know what I mean? It didn't actually happen at all. It didn't happen, you know, so it was not really a rehearsal. It's just, just to listen to the sound and hear, hear the tunes 
how they're going to bang you, on stage. You just can't prepare for how different it sounds on stage. Though. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. Even yeah. if you're in a loud rehearsal studio, it just don't sound the same. A track on stage in front of, in front of everyone yeah. is like getting in, caught in a rip in the sea. If you're, if, you're, if you're paddling away and you're not aware, right. you get caught in that rip, you're fucking out deep. <laughs> right. And you are sending flares up to saying, fucking help me, because this is, I'm out of my depth. It is, it's... it's Has that ever happened? Uh, more than 20 times. Really? Yeah. <laughs> We've, I've what been do doing do? it a while. Right, 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 yeah. I mean, 20 not <laughs> bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's one of these people that can easily sail through that though, do you know what I mean? You, yeah. you just, you just, yeah, you know. I, I find my way. You know, to, you know, to navigate it. It sounds <laughs> as if even after all this time, you still haven't kind of really figured out how it works. <laughs> and that that's part of it. That's the best right, man, that is, that, that well, is it. In a, in a way, the funny thing is, is that it, it to us, it's so natural and so, yeah. and I say simplistic. I mean, we're, we're you know, you, on one hand, you don't want to ignore the integrity and the, the belief and the passion and the desire and the love for it. But in a way, it's so fucking simple. There's, there's almost nothing to it right. other than what you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you understand, if you've been to see it, you understand it as well as, I can, I'll speak for myself here, but as well as I do. Right, yeah, yeah. Because well, it, it's as simple as what you see there. Yeah, uh, well, uh, like, on that, like, you know, Jolt Generation was about the, was kind of thematically about the Criminal Justice Act. Yeah. Is there, a, a, like, a, a unifying theme to Notorious? Well, you know, apart from the title, we kind of, um, we like the idea of, like, um, or, you know, people have been drawn into, get easily sucked into a way of thinking, and everyone's guilty of it, you know, and those are the tourists, you know what I mean? And, to step off the path and kind of find another way. It's about exploring and escapism still, you know, yeah. we, because we are an escapism band, you know. We've never been political, even though kind of you, you kind of bump in into things along the way, do you know what I mean? We, we don't want politics in music, you know, for us it don't work. Right, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because I was going to ask about, there's a, a lyric on um, Champions, uh, Champions of London yeah. where you go like, civil unrest, grab your bulletproof yeah. vest. And the, I wondered if, if that's just like an evocative line that creates a mood or no, if it means something specific. That, that does mean something. It's talking about territories in, in London or any city. Right. When borders of, of different territories, different areas come together and people crossing over those borders. Right, and okay. just, you know, because there's a lot of, you know, I live in London, and it's just a lot of tension, and that's, that track is about that, do you know what I mean? That's, that's what that track is about. Um, and so there's a couple of features on the, on the record as well, um, horror mm. uh, on there. Like what, how, what was, how did that come about? What Maxim um, saw him play live a couple, few years back and told me about this when they first come out. And uh, got, I just got in touch with them because they, they speak in the same language as me, you know, and I just kind of liked... I liked the fact that in America, most hip hop tends to follow each other. Do you know what I mean? It, it, a lot of the hip music sounds similar, the production and stuff. Right. Yeah. And they seem to be just doing something different, you know. And I, they were doing some. When I saw them, I saw them at Afro Punk in uh, Alexander Palace. Do you know what I mean? And I just saw them, and I just saw something in them. What we do, you know, something similar, you know, in their performance and. Uh, yeah, man. Do you know what I mean? I just, I just loved it. Do you know what I mean? I went and che checked them out online. Do you know what I mean? But you know, I hit Liam up and said, "Oh man, you heard a horror." Do you know, you know, and that's how I linked up, linked up with it. But and basically, like when I did the track, I mean, I think originally it was talked about it was for them. You know, I did it for their album, and then basically uh, a bit of arguing and persuasion, and I kind of said our album. <laughs> so <laughs> everyone was happy in the end. Do you know what I mean? Barnes Courtney is also Yeah, Barnes was, was basically, my friend was producing his album or producing some tracks on his album and I heard his voice, it was literally this simple. And I said, oh, who is that? And I was working on a track that Keith was on. And I, it's like when I hear a sample, I just heard his voice, I wrote some lyrics, said I'll get him to sing those for us. And he literally tagged it onto the end of one of his sessions <laughs> and said, okay, he's done those lyrics well. I said, oh, okay, cool, see if it works, bang. And that's how it happened, it worked. But it's funny, it's like you see Barnes Corner credit and something, you know, you know that what his stuff sounds like, and it's sort of like soft and I kind know, of... The stuff, I, the stuff that he, my mate did isn't soft, it's, right, okay. it's noisy. Oh right, okay, yeah. okay. maybe he's yeah. like quite eclectic. Yeah, yeah, the stuff, the album he's, he did, 
but I kind of is it's kind of more like a backing vocal, I think. Yeah. And same thing because I, I never think of vocals as performances. I think of them as sounds. Yeah. That's, the, that's how I kind of hear it. Do you know what I mean? So it was just like it was like his voice is quite high, and it just worked really well with with Keith's and his is kind of backing that up. So that kind of worked, and basically um, I didn't ever think it. You know. Yeah. You know. Um. Like looking back at sort of you know around Fatland and and all, and all that kind of era, like it, from the outside it looked like it was very like hedonistic and, and crazy. Was it like the way it looked when you yeah. were there? Yeah, it was a mad time in the nineties. You talking about the nineties? Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a mad time, but I mean that mad time sort of extended well into the two thousands. Do you know what I mean? Um, well, the reason I ask this is it's, it's kind of interesting, like comparing the current generation of young people to the previous night, really, every year they do another study that finds out that like, young people now don't drink, don't yeah. take drugs, don't go clubbing, yeah. um, like the way that they, they did in like, the 90s. And I just wonder, like, what, what do you make of that? Well, yeah, I agree with you. I, I think um, it's in much more sort of hedonistic times back then than it is now. Do you think they're missing out on anything? Because they're like... They're nah, probably not, because the drugs seem like they kill people more these days. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. You know, obviously this generation, they've got their buzz, do you know what I mean, whatever it is, you know? Yeah. Every generation has their thing, do you know what I mean? It's, it's just, it'd be just like, you know, us, us saying to this generation, oh, you missed out on so-and-so. Right. It, would, it would be like the 60s generation saying it to us. Yeah, yeah, You've yeah. missed out. You know, everybody had, they had their buzz, they, they've got their buzz. We had our buzz then, and doing whatever we did. And this time they've got their, their, their thing, whatever it is, you know, so. It's interesting, because there's always been this idea that like, oh, excess and creativity kind of go hand in hand. So it's interesting to, it'd be interesting to see how that kind of plays out. Yeah. Now. I mean, music is kind of like, it's, it seems to me like I've got a 14 year old son, you know, and the way he accesses music is so different to, to obviously to the way we used to. Just it seems to become so almost secondary in a way. Do you know what I mean? And it's the live stuff that keeps right. it there. That's the pure form of connecting with people, not through the other ways, because it seems like it's just a soundtrack to games or films or shit like that. You know. And I think if, I reckon you know if you turn that off, people would realise the value of it again still. But like, was was the excess and the creativity was was there actually a link there for you? Do you think back in the day? Back in the day, was that important? So right at the beginning, there was, um, because we came out of. I mean, I'm talking about myself here, but like, came out of the rave culture where it was drug fueled. Yeah. Um, but soon, as we dived into the band and that started to roll, you know, that obviously wasn't going out so much. I was doing the band, and that kind of just took over. But I mean, we, we've seen many casualties along the way, do you know what I mean? Right, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It worked for me at the beginning. Um, I'm sort of skipping about a bit now, but like the, the, this whole thing about, oh, they, this, this generation don't like go out as much. Actually, weirdly, ironically, there's a kind of a cult thing of like the illegal rave is back. There's like loads of like numbers of you know, kids like start having parties in fields and like abandoned warehouses and stuff. I hope so. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you, like, you think that's a, sort of like a good sign? If, he, if he's pushing forward, man, if he's some retro sort of revival thing, then forget it, do you know what I mean? But it's kind of, if people can bring, like, if people can bring some kind of new thing to it, a new angle, then that's great, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm into that. I think it's kind of like a reaction to like, you know, going out clubbing now is very sort of sanitised. Yeah, 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 I can Definitely. see that. Yeah. I think, you know, that will eventually come round, won't it, do you know, what I mean? you know, because obviously there was a time where, you know, obviously before, um, around the generation where everything went back into the clubs. It's going to overspill, isn't it, do you know what I mean? Right. It's going to be a time when people are just, get, like, it's too sanitised and people are in clubs and they just think, I want to break out of this and want something a bit more dangerous, yeah. a bit more accessible and a bit more fun. So, you know, it's, I think it just goes, it's, it goes waves in waves, doesn't it? Do yeah, I mean? yeah. I think maybe that now is the time that I mean, something yeah. fresh has to happen. There was, there was something, uh, it was a couple of years ago now, but like, near where, near where I live, up in Belsize Park, like, there was a rave on the heath, <laughs> right in the middle, <laughs> the dip, right in the middle, and I'm always up there, you know, walking about or whatever, and I just see some kids like at seven in the morning, loads of people about, I'm like, what the fuck's going on? There was a party that they busted in the middle of the heath. 
it, do, it does go on actually because where I live, Jermaine in Essex, is right on the, you know, on the river, going to going towards another village. Do you know what I mean? Apparently, like kids gather on this on this, and do you know what I mean? There's a, there's a little bank, and they, they bring in a little sound system and whatever, and it, it just goes off. Yeah. Every couple of weeks, something's going off down this down the river. Great. Do you know what I mean? Um, so you're going uh, back on tour uh, next month? Uh, yeah, November, yeah. November, so it's the UK and... Yeah. And Europe. So, like, what... Sorry, so you, we're talking about someone that's never been to a Prodigy show before. Like, what, what's going to happen? Well, you know, we care about it, do you know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, we try not to make it the same... You know, we, we make it... We want to make it different to what people have seen last time. You know, bring, bring the album... Uh, artwork to life, you know, and come into that and see that, you know. See the band in the purest form, yeah. you know, because you, you might see the videos, you might see, but that's not the true prodigy, do you know what I mean? The only way you can see the prodigy is to come to a show. That's great. Well, you heard it here first. I've been Jordan Bassett, I've been the prodigy. Thanks for watching. <laughs>